This next set of videos deals with creating 3D objects. How you draw and build a 3D design depends on the shapes you need to develop and whether it's best to start from the basic 3D shapes discussed in this set of videos or whether to edit new and existing geometry to achieve the drawing you need. You'll find that there are many ways of building the same designs with the array of tools at your disposal. You'll also quickly find that you must make decisions early in the design process as to which direction you'll proceed and which tools you intend to use. Now you're about to start working with MicroStation's basic 3D primitive tools. These are easy tools to use and you'll look at each one in turn before I have you assemble relatively complex designs at the end of the video series. What are primitives? They are the simple geometric shapes which can be used with the editing tools to create more and more complex shapes. Now you'll find the primitive solids toolbox on the solids tool frame along with three 3D editing toolboxes. Let's open the Primitive Solids toolbox through Tools and Solids. I'm going to open up the entire toolbox, but I'm interested in this first tool set, which is Primitive Solids. So that one I'm also going to open up as a toolbox on its own. So now I have two toolboxes open. And you see here all of the Primitive Solid tools. And a quick run along them with your cursor will give you a pretty good idea of what the actual solids are. You should also be aware that you'll be working with what are called smart solids, and in later videos, smart services. These classes of elements are smart in that they are capable of carrying information beyond standard size and orientation values. This allows for extensive editing possibilities, as you'll see as the instruction progresses. I will refer to them simply as solids. So let's get started with the first of the tools, which is this one slab solid and look at the tool settings window. First thing is the axis on which you're going to work and we have some choices. We're going to use points which simply means that we enter data points in the drawing to define the faces of the solid but you could work in any of these orientations. Points is the more usual method to do it. Our solids will be orthogonal meaning that they will have right angle corners but if you take orthogonal off, then you can generate solids which are off the vertical. You could input the length, width, and height at this point, but as you'll see, you still have to data point in the drawing to actually define the direction of each of these inputs. The solid won't hang off the cursor, as you would expect with other tools. So into the drawing we go, and let's simply draw a solid. I'm data pointing, I'm starting with the top compass orientation. And the prompt in the status line says define length. All right, we'll do that. Here's my length. Now, this could be in any direction. This way, positive x, negative x, I could switch the compass to a different orientation. The prompt would still be the same define length. So the other two inputs can be in any orientation. Our data point. Now it wants the width. Let me define the width. And now it wants the height, which can be beneath my starting point or above my starting point. I'll just drop it down here since it fits the screen and data point. And there is my solid. Now, right now it's displaying, of course, in wireframe and we'll fix that in the next video. For the moment, however, what you can do is go across to the style dialog box and again, select smooth and default. That will give us a shaded solid. Now, please keep in mind that you always place the length, then the width, then the height for the slab. And you're prompted to do those three things in that order. And again, it doesn't matter which orientation you draw the slab. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start the slab tool again. This time I'm going to switch to a front view. And I'm going to define my slab in this direction first, then in that direction, then in that direction. But in each case, it's length, width, and height. And the height dimension in this case is in this direction. Now that can be a little confusing, but after a while, you won't even look at the prompts because you know exactly what you're about to draw. Now I might also have noticed that you don't need to change the compass orientation after the first face is placed. The tool will automatically rotate the compass for you depending which way you drag the cursor. Okay, let's assemble something a little more interesting than a couple of cubes. Let me get rid of those and follow along and draw what I'm going to draw. 
I'm going to go back to wireframe at the moment. And right now I'm going to draw a slab, which will look a bit like this. Fairly narrow, relatively deep, and reasonably long. I'm going to draw the next one. Same thing, a little bit this way. Relatively shallow and medium long. And I'm going to draw over here a very small one. I'm going to zoom in, in fact, and draw that and that and that. Then I'm going to draw one here. I'm going to change the compass, top view, zoom in, that and that and that. Now, let's see what I can do with this. I'm going to take the element selection tool. So we're going to rotate it. I'm using two points. Do not want to copy. So I'm going to start from there. And I'm rotating, but I want to go in a vertical rotation. So I'm going to change my compass to that orientation. And I want to rotate it to something like that. In 3D, in the isometric view, rotation is perfectly fine, but you have to be aware of what compass orientation you're working in. Let's go to the next one. Want to do roughly the same thing. I'm going to rotate from there. Compass is still in the right place. That one's going to go about there. This one's going to stay where it is. OK, we are now ready to go. So this one I am going to move from the center of that line to the center of that line. This one I'm going to move as well. Now, one of the problems, as you can see, or perhaps you can't see with wireframes, is that they tend to flip backwards and forwards in your view. This is your brain trying to interpret which way round this wireframe is facing. And sometimes it can be quite disconcerting as they flick from one orientation to the other. So this one I'm going to snap to that edge. At this point, I'm going to select this one and make a copy of this. I'm going to copy from that corner to that corner. I'm going to copy again. I'll use this one. Copy again from that corner to that corner. Then I'm going to select both of these and do a mirror. I want to do it about the vertical, and I'm going to select the midpoint of this line, which gets me that. And copy was on in that case. And lo and behold, I have a pretty crude dog. Try that. It's quite a simple exercise and kind of fun. We'll have a look at this again in the next video when we'll talk about some more shading effects. But give this a try.